Zero touch automation is the, uh, the vision that enables a operator to completely revamp their operations and implement automated operational processes and uh, methodology for actually addressing every task in their overall portfolio. The intent of Zero Touch is to rethink the operational framework for the entire operator as an important step toward the digital transformation that uh, we've been thinking about for years, for almost a decade now. Most of our service providers are interested in reducing the time to bring new services into operation. So that's the kind of concept cash kind of route. And one of the requirements to achieve that is zero touch automation. Um, there's also a requirement on cultural issues, technology and things like that. But uh, it's one of the requirements that's driving that. And we're seeing this especially in the new service opportunities around industry verticals enabled by 5G. I think as service providers are looking at these next generation architectures where we have very complex bits of infrastructure that we've never seen before, Making the investment into zero touch is going to be key in being successful. Being able to administrate these types of complex infrastructures is a, is a losing proposition unless you're able to automate the majority of it. By doing that, then we can finally make this a valuable business proposition. Otherwise, you're just going to lose money trying to deploy these complex infrastructures. So traditionally, people have automated processes which represent what they currently do. What we're seeing is a strong move towards needing to have a more service or business capability based approach and then automating that on a 360 degree basis so that covers both assurance, fulfillment, planning, all of that 360 degree life cycle stuff needs to be accommodated and that requires a bit of a difference in thinking. Well the first challenge I think is uh, always trying to understand the impact on the organization and, um, and that's going to require cultural shifts, it's going to require retraining, it's going to require certification on the professional level and it's also going to require some different and fundamental management assumptions about how automated processes are going to be rolled out and how they affect the, and, and how they're migrated from the existing processes, which are very manually intensive. Organizational change is needed. For this to happen, you really have to have a very close cooperation between network, IT and operations in the service provider organization. You cannot divide those organizations any longer. They really need to work jointly on defining KPIs, on actually uh, connecting between what is defined in offline and what the real information which is happening through assurance cycle and feeding back actually the design phase and, and then as a result policies even may change. So that has to be done all together and for that you really need cooperation of those organizations. The biggest challenge as with any new technology is going to be uh, all the early adopters have some conflicting opinions. Uh, until we really start to put these things into practice, we have no idea which of those opinions are actually the great ones and which ones are doomed to fail. Uh, now that we're starting to get our toes into the waters of zero touch automation and actually starting to deploy these in smaller scale and seeing what works and what doesn't, um, now we're starting to weed through some of those challenges. Another one of the challenges is going to be around standards. Uh, there are still competing standards bodies that have different ideas about how to do this, um, how to ratify it, the best way to move forward. Um, and until all those standards start to come together and be a little more cohesive, uh, we're still going to have a little bit of churn in the industry. Zero touch automation is very often associated with the historical processes of just automating operational processes for providing services. And um, actually there's three things that we need to do, operational processes, automated onboarding and also automated partnering. So that doesn't quite get captured with the historical use of zero touch automation, which is important, but not the whole story. Now that we've made you know, pretty significant inroads over the last five years, operators are starting to take the next step, which is to move into orchestrated and automated networks. And this is going to require not only significant investments in technology, but more significant investments in the people that are running these networks 
by actually revamping their operations around these automated objectives. What I think is really required now is for the industry to get behind what are the simple business capabilities that we need to get in place that we can effectively build simple solutions for essentially complex problems which can be shared across multiple partners. That's where we're at. So it's validating those models, those things is what we really need with some kind of industry-based activities. So I think the industry is taking the right steps in now that we're continuing to push forward with standards, we're starting to build some very viable proof of concepts in some of the operator communities. Uh, we're seeing a lot of the commercial vendors stepping up and building more applications and, and more um, devices to be able to make zero touch uh, a reality. Um, as we continue to do this, we're going to see it coming together more and start seeing um, cross integrations between the different um, components as they all start to come together. Uh, the POCs are, are the key to make this happen, but eventually we're going to see someone finally take that leap of faith and deploy a truly zero touch network for the first time. And it's going to have its kinks and bumps and bruises. Um, and, we're, and the entire industry is going to learn from that experience. I would say that the one key thing is that it is that it is a journey. It will not happen one day. As I said, we are not at fully manual operation already. We do have those, you know, written scripts. We do have some AI. We do have some automations in the network. It will happen gradually. Not only that it will happen gradually, it will depend on the service provider, the maturity of its operation, the services, the use cases it has. Well, Service providers obviously don't live in a vacuum. Huh? You know, we are only here to service our, you know, in, in our case, our enterprise customers. All of our enterprise customers are going through massive digital transformation. Huh? They all need to deal with, you know, huge amounts of, of, of data to get information out of that to, to really transform the way they are doing business towards their customers. So they need to be more flexible. They are expecting more flexible, more automated solutions from us. And that's really the main reason why we are doing this, huh? to help our customers. Huh?